the one religion that we really didn't look at that is a major world religion in sixth grade is Christianity. And the reason for that is because it didn't really come to be until this time period that we've recently been talking about. So today we're going to look at the intro and the spread of Christianity during Roman times. As you know, Christianity came from Judaism. So you need to go back a bit to last year when we were talking about Judea. So if you remember correctly, Judea was on the eastern side of the Mediterranean Sea. You can see it here colored in red. Judea was home to the Jewish people. In 63 BCE, the Romans appointed a ruler uh, because the area of Judea became part of their empire. And in 37 BCE, it was Herod, and Herod is an important name. He was appointed king. The Jews didn't really trust him as a leader because he wasn't Jewish. Um, there was not really a reason to. He didn't cause any problems for the Jews, but they felt that they should distrust him because he wasn't Jewish. And in 4 BCE, when he died, his kingdom was divided and unrest broke out between the people and the new leaders. So Rome sent soldiers to reclaim Judea and retake control. They then forced Judea into a military governor, and the military governor was there to keep order and make sure that the Judeans paid their taxes. This time period was mostly peaceful, but it set up this hatred between the Jews and the Romans. The Jews began to see this prophecy or this belief that one day God was going to send a savior and that their homeland would be restored to the kingdom of David. And you remember from last year when we talked about Judaism, that the kingdom of David was what it was established when Judaism was established in this region 2,000 plus years ago. They decided that the person who was going to restore the kingdom would be called a Messiah, also known as the Anointed One. This leads us then to the birth of Jesus. So people don't know exactly when Jesus was born, but modern historians have tied it down to about 6 BCE. This was when Herod was still the king of the region. Um, we get most of our information about Jesus from his followers. Um, today they make up the Gospels of Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John. So in the Bible and the New Testament, those are actually historic records um, kept by people that followed that followed Jesus. Um, most other written record at this time related more to the Romans and to the Roman Empire. So generally speaking, we really don't know a lot about Jesus except for Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John. And it's Luke who kept record of the story of Jesus' birth. Um, Jesus' mother, Mary, lived in Nazareth in a territory of Galilee, and she was told by an angel that she would have a child and that he would be named Jesus. So there are elements of this um, history that come based on belief. So if you are a Christian, you would believe that she was told by angels to have the child um, and that he would be called Jesus. And then if you're not a Christian, there are would be elements that later would contradict whatever you believe. So some of the written record is historic and others would be based on faith. So according to Luke, um, the gospel, he says that Augustus, who was the leader at the time, ordered a census, and that's C-E-N-S-U-S, -S, and that's a count of all of the people in the empire. He wanted to know how many people were there because, of course, he wants to know how much money he should be getting in taxes. So each man is supposed to go to their home city. So uh, David goes to Bethlehem and brings with him Mary, and it's in Bethlehem that Jesus is born. He then grows up in Nazareth, so that's why he's known as Jesus of Nazareth. Later on in Jesus' life, John the Baptist identifies Jesus as the Messiah that the Jews had been waiting for. So after praying for 40 days, Jesus begins to preach in an area called Galilee. So again, some of this is historic in the sense that Jesus was an actual person that existed. Whether you believe in Christianity or not, Jesus was a figure in history. Um, some of the other ideas of him being a messiah or not being a messiah would be based on your religious beliefs. So, the next bit is when 
Jesus begins teaching. Jesus begins teaching um, sometime in his 20s. He starts preaching in synagogues initially, but he grows large crowds uh, who want to hear him. So he starts preaching in more open areas, and his followers became known as disciples. Jesus spends most of his time with average and ordinary people. So he's not spending time with the rich elite. He's spending time with average workers, laborers, farmers. His teachings were traditional Jewish beliefs. So he wasn't teaching anything out of the ordinary for Jews at the time. And he said that the kingdom of God was coming soon. Uh, what he said, though, was that the kingdom of God wasn't going to be on earth, that it would actually be found in heaven. And the way he taught was through parables. And parables were simple stories that had a moral message. So a lot of times they conflicted with the Roman ideas because it was talking about making peace with your neighbors. And a lot of times Romans weren't at peace with their neighbors. In fact, they were at war with them. So people really started to worry about Jesus' messages of love and peace. And they said and they were worried that this was wrong and dangerous and that the Romans were going to start viewing Jesus as a troublemaker, um, which they had the foresight to understand. And they were correct. Jesus said in his prophecies that his enemies were going to actually come together and destroy him and that he would be killed. He had a follower named Judas who actually does betray him and goes and tells the Romans where he was in Jerusalem. He was there in Jerusalem to celebrate Passover. And because the Roman rulers did fear that his supporters would stir up trouble and that Jesus would lead a revolt, the Romans decided that Jesus had to die. At the time, the governor of Judea was a Roman man named Pontius Pilate, and he ordered that Jesus be executed. Execution at the time was where you were hung on a cross, and this was a common method of death in Roman times. So oftentimes today you would hear of uh, Jesus dying on the cross, and it seems the cross seems um, special or holy in some way. But at the time, this was a common way uh, that people were killed um, in public because they would be hung up on the cross and it would take a period of time for them to actually die. So the Gospels say that after he died, three days later, he rose from the dead and he appeared to the disciples. This is known as the resurrection, and this is what Christianity would be based on. Christianity would be based on the belief that Jesus did rise from the dead and that he was the Son of God. He then uh, left and rose to heaven to be with his Father, God, and the, this convinced the disciples then that he was the Son of God, and this began the religion of Christianity. There were people who then began to spread this message of Christianity and try to convert people. A lot of the early converts to Christianity were the Jews because Jesus had Jesus was Jewish. So people who were Jewish and had heard Jesus' message began to believe that he was the Messiah and converted to Christianity. And one of the main leaders in spreading this word was the missionary named Paul. Paul, instead of trying to convert Jews to Christianity, he actually travels around the Roman Empire trying to convert Gentiles. And Gentiles were people who weren't Jewish. So these are people that would have practiced Roman religions or not practiced a religion at all. Um, they, would, they could have believed in no gods or many gods. But as he preached throughout the Roman Empire and made it all the way over to Asia Minor, what's today Turkey, what's today Greece, North Africa, he's spreading this message. He was jailed in Rome in the early CE period. But from jail, he wrote hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of letters to churches all throughout the Roman Empire to uh, encourage them to keep believing and to keep spreading the word of Jesus. He was beheaded in 65 CE as many Romans were starting to be persecuted by I'm sorry, as many Christians were started to be persecuted by the Romans because the Christians were not believing anything to do with Roman gods. Um, they were attracting notice of the Romans. At, at first, the Romans didn't mind the Christians because they thought that the Christians were going to 
believe also in Roman gods. So if the Christians had adopted all the Roman gods in addition to believing in their god, it wouldn't have been an issue to the Romans. But when the Christians refused to worship the Roman gods, this is when the Romans begin to be insulted. It's also a completely different way of life, the Christians, from what was important to the Romans, whereas the Romans preferred wealth and luxury, the Christians preferred simplicity. Uh, some Christians refused to serve in the army because of Jesus' message of harmony and peace. So, of course, the Romans began to see the Christians as a threat. If Christianity was going to spread, it could really cause problems for the Roman Empire. People not joining the military, how would the empire continue to spread? So over time, they declared Christianity to be illegal. Christ Roman emperors were fearful of the Christians. And for a period of time, beginning around the same time as Paul was beheaded, Christians were sentenced to die in a lot of cruel and painful ways. So just as Jesus had been, some were crucified, some were burned to death, some were devoured by wild animals in public. But what impressed people and actually converted more followers to the new religion was that this doesn't destroy the new religion. People aren't afraid. They are standing up for what they believe in. Um, the Christians taught that even the poor and slaves could look forward to afterlife if they followed Jesus. So as this message continues spreading, by 300 CE, there's 30 million Christians that live in the Roman Empire. So 30 million is quite a lot of people. And so in 313 CE, after an important battle that a Roman emperor named Constantine won, he announces the Edict of Milan. And the Edict is a declaration where he says that Christians should be able to practice their religion freely. Eventually, more emperors adopt the ideas of Christianity, and by 380 CE, Christianity goes from being banned in the Roman Empire to becoming the official religion of the Roman Empire. So that's, again, 380 CE. So you're looking at the time from 0 to 380, complete hatred of the Christians, to adopting it as the official religion of the Roman Empire.